Oh, snap. Ray Dalio done did it this time. Listen, if y'all don't know who Ray Dalio is, look him up. One thing that I want you to remember is that just in December, he was talking about how he did some long puts to hedge his overall portfolio, right? And everyone was going crazy because it's like, whoa, this man just put a billion dollars into long puts for March. And look at what we are seeing right now in the market. This is why we say, I'm not saying that he's right. I'm not saying that he's wrong, but millionaires don't believe in astrologers billionaires do and when i talk about pluto and saturn in that conjunction you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but let's talk about the market right now just taking a look at the nasdaq is this a stock market crash is this the first weekly candle that we've seen on the nasdaq it definitely is on a weekly chart and you can see it here now what i'm showing you is the nasdaq obviously with the weekly chart just showing the last 15 years and i want you to take a look at this momentum candle that we have for this past this past week this is something other than what we've seen basically in the last couple of years just looking back all the way to 2017. this candle shows that we went from a positive one standard deviation down to about the mean in literally one week that is definitely a momentum candle for you now, this is a weekly chart, right? So if you start seeing a change in the weekly direction of the NASDAQ, something that's typically very strong, and you can see it here, could this potentially be, could this mean that we're basically facing a stock market crash? Now, many people have been taking this lightly, but the coronavirus, as you can see in this last week, has definitely been affecting um, U.S. stocks it says here that the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ all dropped more than 4% in largest one-day point declines on record. Now, Trump hasn't been taking this seriously. If you saw his tweets um, from yesterday, he was talking about like how everything was under wraps, everything was under control. But it seems that now that we've seen some of those those little people popping up saying that they have the coronavirus over here in the U.S., that there's starting to be a lot more fear. And what it seems to um, be showing us, at least when we're looking at the charts, is that this actually may be a change in trend. Look at this. It says the coronavirus drives stocks down for six days in a row and into correction. Now, again... A lot of people may say that the fundamentals don't matter, right? The technical analysis traders are going to say that. But as you can see, this is really how you start to combine these two um, ideas, technicals and fundamental analysis. So when I started off this year, 2020, I'll be honest with you. I was really trying to see if the NASDAQ was going to bust through this positive two standard deviation on a daily chart. Because when I looked at the daily perspective... And when I opened it up to, let me see if I customize it, to daily perspective and I drop it down to the max available years, the last time the NASDAQ was all the way at the positive two standard deviation, let me see if it'll bring it up. Look at that, look at that trend. Oof, that thing is strong. The last time it was up here at a positive two standard deviation was in 2000, 2000. So again, when this year started and I saw that Pluto is conjunct Saturn, that happened on December 21st, 2019. You know, we talked that real astrology and the reason why is because again, millionaires don't believe in astrology, but billionaires do. And they understand that planetary alignments that ain't nothing to play with. That's just another form of understanding the mathematical output of how humans are interacting. When you talk about the stock market, this is just basically a mathematical output on how investors and the overall flow of energy, how it's feeling. You know, that's the reason why this reacts off of emotions, off of fear, greed, and uncertainty. That's the very reason why this market, you lose money if you do not what? If you don't control those very emotions, the very emotions that it moves off of. So again, I know people are looking at this and some people are saying, eh, let's not take it serious. 
Um, some people are actually now starting to take it serious because you see that the Nasdaq, I mean, it dropped a couple, it dropped basically a thousand points in six days. So that is definitely a lot of momentum that's happening due to this coronavirus. And even though we may not want to take it serious, even may, even though we may want to hope for the best, what seems to be happening here is definitely the Nasdaq moving into the correction and possibly changing its trend. We'll see. I will say this though, this is definitely very tempting to want to buy, right? Because when you drop it down to like an hourly chart, you can see that the NASDAQ dropped from here to here. So it looks like it has to retrace some, right? It looks like it has to. I know a lot of my, um, my, <laughs> my, my other side of the traders, those traders who always want to pick up on the, the long side, what everyone's buying. I know all of you guys are looking at this like, huh? This actually looks like a good buy, right? It may look like a, go a good pullback. I'll say this. I'm actually looking to buy on the NASDAQ right now, but I don't think I'm holding this for long. Actually, if I buy on the NASDAQ, if I buy on the NASDAQ and I actually use a 180-day perspective four-hour chart, I'm buying because I see it already passed the negative one standard deviation i'm looking at the possibility that there could be a little bit of a retracement but do i overall think that the nasdaq is going back up anytime soon i mean i understand that they keep printing money but this weekly candle here this weekly candle is looking very strong so i actually sent out an alert um, through our free alerts on the micro e-minis with the NASDAQ. And I said that, you know, I'm going to do a quick scout probably with it on a bullish perspective just over the next maybe two days. Maybe I'll close it on Friday, maybe even close it um, over the next after the weekend. But I do think there is possibility that it could pick up some. But it seems that what we are seeing in the NASDAQ is a possible change in direction. Who knows? Could this be the beginning of what we saw in 2000? The technicals aren't lying right now. Now, of course, because of what we're seeing in the NASDAQ, we've also seen um, some of the futures positions affected as well. So trade God, right? What have I been trading this week? Looking at some opportunities right now in copper, because copper reached an all-time low. Natural gas as well, crude oil, both of them are basically at bottoms. So um, right now, you know, I'm looking at the charts, especially the four-hour and the daily charts, looking at possibilities to put on some spreads. So I am probably going to do some high-probability ver vertical put spreads, maybe a bull put spread on natural gas and crude oil. That's what I've been talking with um, a lot of my members about, is how you can start looking for those high-probability bull put spreads um, that you can do with the NASDAQ, not the NASDAQ, natural gas, and also um, with crude oil. This is another one that I've been um, basically playing all year long. I made some good profit in the beginning of February, but it seems that after the coronavirus, after those fears started to linger, copper started to go right back down to that about negative one standard deviation. So right now, I'm wondering right about I'm, I'm probably going to get back into a buy position with um copper but i'm just waiting to see a little bit more on what's happening um with china because that's one of the major areas that is affecting copper right now um and meantime looking at doing a vertical bull put spread with natural gas So if you're wondering what the bull put spreads and the bear call spreads are, I am going to do a video on YouTube about it. Um, I do find that many times it's just really important that especially if you're a beginner trader, that you may want to have a mentor that's helping you understand these types of spreads. So if you're interested in probably doing some one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you can just hit me up in my email. That's talking options with a G at gmail.com and I'll get back to you on that. Um, this is the reason why I'm looking at doing a scalp or at least even starting to do a long-term trade with natural gas. And when I say I'm doing a bull put spread, high probability, basically what I'm looking to do is 
find some high probability strike prices by using the expected move. Um, I'm not going to go into all of this right now because this is exactly what we talk about in our membership, but using the high probability expected moves to basically choose a high probability strike and typically looking at the 20 to 8 day expiration because this is probably going to be a swing trade um, that I hold for the long term. So obviously everyone's really focused on the NASDAQ right now what's happening with the stocks but um, don't forget the futures market as well because obviously this is also affected by the coronavirus specifically crude oil natural gas um, even some of the currencies obviously I did send an alert out earlier on the Aussie because I'm in the Aussie bullish on that as well as the euro as well um, so there definitely are po opportunities that are, are popping up in trade God so keep your eyes out on that as well as looking at hey I don't know some long puts on the Nasdaq I'm probably gonna try to get into some long puts on the Nasdaq if there's a retracement for sure um, especially if it doesn't meet basically a higher high Another thing is that we don't really have any high impact news that's coming out for the rest of this week, but on Monday we do have PMI and it seems like the Aussie has the rest of our day. But next week will definitely be a really important week. We got the unemployment, non-farm employment that's coming up and then also next week is First Friday. So definitely expecting a lot of volatility. Look at this Friday, March 6th. Put this one in your calendar because that's going to be a really good trading day. Unemployment, non-farm coming out as well, and the trade balance for the Canadian for the um, Canadian dollar. All of this after the first weekly candlestick just formed for the Nasdaq. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a crash or do you think this is a pullback? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, make sure you talk in options.